Uh, let's continue to look at the general case of eccentric axial loading. And in this example, three uh, axial loadings applied off the centroid, but rather they applied at the corners here of the box beam. And in this problem, we first want to determine the stress at point A and B, which are the case in this cross section uh, constitute the ABD. The second one, we want to determine where the neutral axis will intersect with this uh, this cross section ABD. Okay, so the let's start with the first one to translate the problem statement into our standard uh, template, and which means. Um, <coughs> In terms of the application of the loading, in terms of our template, I want to have the three axial loadings being uh, through the centroid, okay, like shown here. And through this kind of the shifting of the load, they're going to induce the bending. So basically, here is our final the expectation of the final result will be. So now let's take a look at how we can do this. So the first one, we deal with this one, see here my calculation put into color, and we the first one deal with this one. So if we want to move the 14 kilonewton to uh, the centroid here, just like shown here, and then this moment will in also induce the moment, for example, 14 multiply with this arm, okay, 14, and multiply with this arm will have uh, induced the um, the uh, the for, for example here let me draw that one here and use the color code so 14 multiplied with this arm will have the moment applied and induced in this way okay so so that is the uh, the moment about z so that is this term here that is a magnitude and here I have identified my, my positive sign for dis describing the moment so here according to the positive the sign convention this is negative here okay on the other side and uh, this for this load multiplied with this arm they're going to have uh, induced the moment about y-axis in that way and again here is my sign convention for positive so that one introduced the magnitude is this and minus sign because according to my sign convention and that induced is negative here okay so you can you should be able to repeat this kind of things for the other and then let's take a look at one more so for example we look at this force here this force being translated to the central line and then that will also induce for example if you multiply with its arm and that will going to induce the moment about z and the magnitude equal to this and then that direction aligned to the sign convection here so here is the positive and on the other side, this force multiplied with this arm distance, and that going to induce the bending about y, okay, and about y in that direction, and this is a magnitude, and because it induced in that direction is opposite to our sign convention, so here I put minus sign here. Okay, so you can you should be able to do the third one here. Okay, so that's a detailed calculation. So in total, uh, what we have obtained is the my mz in terms of the the magnitude m my equal to uh, 525 uh, newton per meter and mz basically here is 2625 uh, newton per meter so we have those informations in place and also the total axial loading is uh, 70 here and besides this one you also need to we also need to calculate the moment of inertia respect to the uh here is the 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 symmetric line this is the y-axis and this is our z-axis so we need to determine the moment of inertia respect to the x and the y and z so that is here if you still not familiar with or still not clear how to do this kind of calculation here please uh, go back to our starting point of this chapter and there we have the review of how to do the calculation for the moment of inertia or otherwise you go back to review your uh, learning from statics and there you should get some information and to correctly calculate this one that is important and to know how to do this one that is more important so here is I assume you should have the 
prerequisite about this knowledge here. And this is a cross section of this box beam. <coughs> so with everything ready, then we can move on to answer the questions. How to first one, how to determine the uh, the bending stress. So um, for the figure two, what is figure two? This is our figure two here. Okay, for figure two, in total, we have three kinds of the loading: axial loading and bending. Okay, the bending in M Y M N Z. So basically, this is a combination of the axial loading, which is the stuff we learned from chapter two, and M Y M N Z. Basically, that is the what we call the unsymmetric bending. That is from previous section there. So here we decompose into the axial loading and also uh, with the individual bending. Okay, so I decompose into MYMZ and MY is 525 and MZ equal to 2625, I think. Let me double check. Yes, 2625, okay. So <coughs> with this one, then now we want to determine the point A. So right now, basically that uh, here we're showing it is the cross section. Uh, here, okay, so that is a cross section here we're talking about. Okay, so here the point A basically is here. So here for this case we superpose, so here is the sign here. And for this axial loading, basically that magnitude uh, force divided by area, and this is tension, so we put a uh, positive sign here, tension. And then for this case, you can see, uh, let me highlight here. For this case, the bending MY is about this. So right away, you should know the right-hand side here, that should be in tension, and the left-hand side, sorry, left-hand side is in tension, then the right-hand side is in compression. In the similar way for bending in MZ, and we also has this one, the lower portions is in tension, the upper portion is in compression here. So that is the first step, we define the attribute. And now we determine the, the, the magnitude. So at point A, and again, uh, in our formula, the, the, the template is MY over I, okay? In terms of magnitude is this. N is a bending moment, so we simply take into this template, and for this subcase, for this subcase is MY. <coughs> Y is the distance between the neutral axis to uh, where we're interested. And for this case, the neutral axis is Y. So between the A to Y axis, they basically that is the dimension here, uh, half of this, and 37.5 millimeters. So that is the distance from here, from here to here, okay. And um, then uh, for uh, at point B, we can repeat the point B basically uh, the same thing, the point B, the distance is from here to here, the same as point A, so that is uh, this case here, okay? And for either point A and point B, and they are the intention, so here I put the positive sign here. Then we can look at the, the case here. So for this subsystem, the point A, so again we put into this template, MY over I. And M is a bending moment, here is MZ. Okay, and then from point A to right now the neutral axis is the Z axis about which the bending apply. So from here to here that is a distance and that distance go to this this holder here, right? So that is 62.5. And then respect to the moment of the shell is IZ, okay, about the Z axis. So that's point A here. And at point A that is the, the tensile, the tension. So here I put a positive sign here. Now we look at point B. At point B, again, MY over I, M is the same and MZ, okay? The distance from Y, to, from point B to neutral axis is this one. So that distance basically measure is 60.5, okay, and IZ. And here, the in terms of magnitude, the A and B have the same magnitude. However, at point B, point B, C, that located in the compressive region. So we put a negative sign here. So here you simply do the algebraic uh, this term, positive term, plus positive term, plus positive term, and you plug in all the numbers, that should be here. At point B, the same thing, a positive term, plus a positive term, and plus a negative term, and that going to here. 
Okay, so for this case, hopefully uh, that can easily uh, to identify the, the kind of stress. And you may exercise the point D here, okay? You may exercise the, the stress at point D. And here I can tell you the stress at point D simply is not negative to point A, sigma A here. The sigma D equal to negative sigma A and equal to minus 14.3.53. You can, this is the answer, you can check your calculation with this one. <coughs> And now the, we move on to the next questions, how to determine the neutral axis. And this is a very important question in, in pure bending in these chapters, okay, to this end. And you should uh, be very confident about the, what is the neutral axis is and how, what is the technique you can apply. And here, let me re emphasize this technique uh, one more time. So here we uh, look at these things here and for this case, and here I redraw the cross sections, and this is point A is here, and B is here, okay? And here, the, this is point D. So I redraw the cross sections, and on that cross section, I put into four quadrants, and this is uh, quadrant one here, and quadrant two, three, and four. Okay, and we'll look at the, from the previous page here. On the perfect page, let me copy the information. So um, how can I do it? So let me go back to my original, then I will quickly make a copy, okay? So I will keep this one. So let me quick um, make a copy to where that will be convenient here, okay? So that is the our original and uh, copy to here, okay? Okay, sorry about this. <coughs> okay, so we start from here. So basically, the overall uh, the distribution of the stresses basically is the superpose of the one, two, three sub cases. Okay, uh, sub cases. And for this case, and let me use the color. For this case, this is everything is in tension in the four quadrants. So here is a the tension in the all quadrants here. And then for this case, and this is the tension, tension, and compression, compression. So let me copy that one. Tension, tension, compression, compression. Okay. And then for this case, then we can see that one is tension, tension, compression, compression. So tension, tension, compression, compression here. <coughs> okay. So here we can guess, and so from here, because the, this is the summations of the stresses from the three subsystem, so the total stress will be the, the, the algebraic sum of those three quantities in terms of the size. And then we know that the neutral axis locate is where the definition of the neutral axis is along which the stress equal to zero. So basically we're looking for the possible region where the combination of the three terms will be given to zero. So here I make a guess, okay? So basically this quadrant three definitely is not because the summation of the three positive terms won't give us a zero stress there. So this, we don't consider this quadrant here, okay? So we don't consider this one. And this one, two positive, two positive, and one minus, and here is likely, okay, so this is likely, so let me check. And this one is also likely, and this one is also likely because it might be have these things. And here I simply make a guess, okay? I make a guess and see what happens. So here I assume, and I assume uh, the, the neutral axis where something happen in the quadrant two. So in quadrant two, I simply, here is my guess. So here, here, I simply pick a point where the neutral axis will pass through. And that point simply have the coordinate y and z. So I put that one into considerations. Right now I'm looking into is the formulations of the stress at a point. And say this point, let me call the point E, okay? The point E has the coordinate y, z. 
So by repeating our previous calculations, and right now the point E is here, the point E, the the point E is in this quadrant, somewhere here in this quadrant, the point E locate in the same quadrant of point B. So here I'm going to copy this template, positive plus positive plus minus here. So positive plus plus positive plus minus here, that basically that is the same thing, the same candidate formulation as point B. And here for point B, I simply put a coordinate of point B there, okay? And that's the coordinate of point B, and here I put a coordinate of the point E, okay, in terms of YZ. I don't know the YZ, but that I'm going to solve for. Good. So here the stress, and we ask in the point E is on the neutral axis, so the stress must be equal to zero per the definition of the neutral axis. So this basically is a linear line is a function for lead describing the strain line equations, okay? And P over A is this number. I do the calculation here. So basically that is the 160.2 multiply Z and this one multiply with Y. So basically this is the linear equations. This equation describe the neutral axis, okay? So this equation basically here that has a positive slope and then that is off the center. So let me just schematically draw this one here. Then that one will be something like this. And I, I, haven't, I haven't done this in detail, but you can check, you can help me, okay? To plot this one on this and that will be very likely is the, uh, will be something like this. So again, I, let me try to plot on the cross section. Uh, no, not this one doesn't pass through the center. So not pass through the center here. Okay, so that one when, uh, for this case, for example, it's say uh, uh, intersecting when, um, when z equal to zero, y equal to uh, some part. So that one should be something like this one here. Okay, so that is a neutral axis. You can double check uh, for me. So it's something like this one. It didn't pass through the center here, okay, because how because of this number here. Okay, and now we want to find what is the intersection with the AB. Okay, so the AB, the AB uh, has the AB, this segment AB H, H AB has the the feature that is Z coordinate uh, along the HAB, the Z coordinate equal to positive 337.5 millimeter. So basically we have this number introduced to here. Okay, then we can solve for Y. Y equal to this number. So basically that number equal to 67 millimeter. So from here we can determine the intersection here. And then you can similar way, you can also try to identify what the intersection here, then two points, then you can make a line here, okay? So for this example, there's a quite a bit uh, the, the important, uh, the, the calculation techniques, and basically that summarizes everything we have learned in these chapters here, okay? And in addition, the, here I want to bring the attention to you, the neutral axis for general case of eccentric axial loading, the the neutral axis doesn't pass through the centroid anymore. So this is this is the centroid of this uh, box shape, the cross section, and this neutral axis doesn't pass through the centroid anymore. So this is the case when eccentric loading like this one. So that is the the the, the case here. Okay. Um, so this page, I simply uh, make a good copy of the solution process and providing the details for your, uh, for your self-study. 